Second Chronicles chapter 14. So Abijah slept with his fathers, and they buried him in the city of David. Again, we're going. To, we keep seeing this uh, slept with their fathers, and buried with him in the city of David. Well, that's the uh, mausoleum. That's the, uh, the the burying place, the cemetery of the kings. And Asa his son reigned in his stead. In his days, the land was quiet ten years. So this one is likened to Solomon's reign. There is actually peace, peace for ten years. Um, Nasa did that which was good and right in the eyes of the Lord his God. So here's a king that does right. We're going to see kings, like I said, in Judah, they do right. There are some that do wrong. There are some that start off wrong to get right. There are some that are right and do wrong. But you don't see any kings in Israel that are right. For he took away the altars of the strange gods. Well, what more do you want to say? That's black and white. You want to get rid of God, you got to get rid of the altars. If this is a Christian land, some claim it was. Where do we go wrong? We allow strange altars. We have a constitution that says any religion has a right. You think God approves of that? Let's be frank. Now people are all upset with this Boston thing. That they didn't want this guy's body to be buried in Massachusetts. Well the constitution says he has rights just as anybody else. You can't change the constitution to fit your own well-being. Now the way this guy got right and went pleased the Lord is they took away the strange gods. If it's not the God of the Bible, it needs to go. When God told Israel to go in the land, he told Israel to wipe all the residents in the land out. They didn't do it. It was incomplete obedience. And look at the mess they're in. They got to protect their borders. Listen, they built walled cities back then. You could tell who could go in the gate and who couldn't go through the gate. In America today, we have an enemy, and our enemy is being brought up in our schools, our colleges, to do damage in our land. And no one's smart to it. America, I mean, I don't want to get into America, but America has to build walls. we got to say it's enough. And the high places. Again, those high places are like Babel. That's the highest we can go, the highest we can get to God. It's religion. I'm going to say it. Why is there steeples on churches? The higher the steeple, the more it can be seen. The more you can get to God, you know, the bats and the belfry. And then also it's sex uh, worship. It's the male uh, part. There's the steeple. People, why don't you study? Why don't you look at why you do things? It's got to be a reason. It's got to be a source. So it's not one day, oh, okay, let's do this. NASA has high places. They're forever trying to get to their God. It's not the God of the Bible. And break down the images. So shall we go into a Catholic church and destroy the statues? No. Not as Christians. But according to Romans 13, yes. See, if you want to know what to do as a Christian, you read Paul. You read every book that Paul wrote to the Christian individual. You want to learn how to be a Christian nation? Then you go in the Old Testament and read what God says about a nation. It would be okay for the United States government to get rid of all the gods and get rid of all the idols. For a Christian to go into a church and bash and break things, that would be illegal. Romans chapter 13. Again, it's that scale, 1 to 10. you got to walk a 5. 
and cut down the groves. There's those groves again. Little trees planted by a statue. They keep showing up. This isn't just cute, isn't it? Just, no, it's a, it's a violation of scripture. Long before the Roman Catholics showed up. Long before Babylon and its religion. These are these religions of the of the Canaanites, the Hamites. Groves, high places. Listen, Abraham was doing it in the high places. Because there was no one else to do. Abraham made a grove because there was nothing else to do. But now you have a revelation. Now that you know what God wants to do, now the things that were okay for them, it's not okay today. You say, why didn't God kill Cain? Cain had no idea that murder was a, was a crime. So God couldn't pass judgment. Now after when Noah got off the boat, God said, listen, I, those that kill anybody, including animals, their blood's going to be required. Okay, now it's a crime. Why was it okay for for the the, the sons and the sons and daughters to marry from Adam and Eve, and it's not okay today? Well, today we got a vast population. You can choose. Back then they didn't. They had to have their family relations in order to build a nation and build the world. Why did God tell them that, you know, within their own tribe that they violated? Because he wanted a pure Jewish race. And it's not that today. Look at, look at the line of Jesus Christ. You want to talk about Jesus Christ, the holy, the God of all? You realize who he's got in his line, Matthew chapter 1? He's got a harlot. He's got a woman that went and dressed up as a harlot and slept with uh, uh, Judah and produced a baby. Man is sin. Man is a sinner. There is none perfect, none righteous, no, not one. And commanded Judah to seek the Lord God of their fathers. Wow, look at that, church, church state. Commanded the people. He forced them. And if, I guess if you didn't want to serve the God in the, of the Bible, well, actually you didn't have a Bible, if you didn't want to serve the God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, you can get out. And the fathers would be Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, no Ishmael. And to do the law and, com and commandment. In order to do the law and the commandment, they had to break it out. They had to get the priests to, to teach the people. They had to have an open. They had to make sure they had the law and the commandments. They didn't have anybody that perverted them. And he took away out of all the cities of Judah... The high places, he got rid of them. And the images, he got rid of them. And the kingdom was quiet before him. You want peace? You want quietness? Listen, there was no quietness since Solomon messed around with all those women. Haven't you recorded? Haven't you been reading with, with Jeroboam since he sat as king in Israel? Kept on having civil wars with, with Judah? This guy now, he finally gets rid of all the junk, gets rid of the abominations, gets right with God, commands the people to serve God, and God gave him peace and gave him rest. I'm just trying to find where it says how many years again. Ten years. Ten years of rest. Can you imagine what you can do with ten years? You don't have to worry about your enemies coming over your soldiers. You don't have to worry about the Philistines. I mean, how many times did David? David conquered the Philistines. Okay. And then the Philistines came back. Oh, boy. And David conquered them. And David went to church to the Pharisees. David went to go, you know, bless a man whose father died. And then he's got to go fight them now. And Asa didn't have to worry about that. He could build. He can strengthen. He can do in his nation. They can get back to God totally and worship God totally and do completely right. He can keep his eyes on the people and make sure that this junk didn't come back. And he built fenced cities in Judah. I mean, should, fence, should cities be fenced? Yes. Keeps the riffraff out. It's protection. But in this day and age with missiles and, and uh, automatic gunfire and all that, I mean, really want to do you that good. But it tells you whose land is whose land. 
the land had rest and he had no war in those years. No war. Not even with Israel. So like Solomon too, he failed. I mean, Solomon failed. Asa is like him. Even David didn't have rest. Saul, King Saul didn't have rest. Only two times we see rest in Israel right now. Under King Solomon, Solomon blew it. And now under King Asa. Solomon lost it because he went after the gods of the people. Asa got it because he got rid of the gods of the people. Get that. You want a revival? You got to get rid of the gods. You want me to name them? I'll name them. I'll give you a good name. Easter is a god called Istar. Vanity and uh, other profane things are in the church. Therefore he said unto Judah, and this is, you know, the people, south, let us build these cities and make them, wait, and make about them walls and towers and gates and bars. Where the Lord, where the land is, while the land is yet before us. All right, we're in peace. Let's build. Let, let's strengthen ourselves. You know, Ace is thinking, this is not going to last. So while we got this peace, he's a very smart man. We need to build defenses, and we need to take care of the people. Wow, he, he's looking out for the people. Jeroboam didn't even, I mean, uh, Rehoboam didn't even look out for the people. I'll make it even harder for you. And make about them walls and towers, gates and bars. Walls that go around, towers is to look out far away for an enemy that's coming. Gates and bars would be, you know, where you come in and you go out, they shut it. Because we sought the Lord our God, we have sought him, and he has given us rest on every side. So if you, if you seek God, if you do what God wants you to do, rest. Now, the Bible says for the Christian, all they that live godly shall suffer persecution. We're not in the Old Testament. But I can tell you out of personal experience that, listen, I have been in some great times in my life of trouble and disaster and not know where to go and have that peace of God. And I'm going to tell you something. There is no way that you can describe it. And when you have your friends and your family looking at you and saying, you know, how are you doing? Why, how are you so strong? You handled that so great. And they look at you like, no, I didn't. <laughs> At least I didn't think I did. I can only give the credit to God. I may have been looking calm on the outside, but on the inside, I had a bunch of butterflies flying around. And that peace can only come from God. And that peace you need, and one of the books you need to read, there's three books I say you should read. The Holy Bible, the King James, every day. Fox's Book of Martyrs will tell you. How about peace and the Holy Spirit and how to live for God and uh, Pilgrim's Progress, how to walk, how not to walk as a Christian. Pilgrim's Progress should be read, read less every, every two years of your life. So they built and prospered because God was with them. Christian, the Bible says that God is with us. God indwells in us. The Holy Spirit indwells in us. The Word indwells in us, which is Jesus. John chapter 1. Should we not be building? Paul said to the Corinthians, No other foundation can, that, can be laid as Jesus Christ. And upon that, you are to build. Not many Christians are building. Oh, I don't want because you said I'll suffer persecution. Still, get building. Too many people out there, Christians, they got the they got this concrete slab, and that's all it's been there for 10, 20, 30, 40 years. Nothing on it. They didn't try nothing. Oasis well, had peace. Well, yeah, he had peace. 
And I told you, you can get peace too, even in hard times. And Asa had an army of men that bear targets and spears. So even though he's in peace, he still builds up a military. He still trains his men. Out of Judah, 300,000. Out of Benjamin, you know, they, they were fierce fighters. You want to study the Bible of fighting and all that. Look at Benjamin. Benjamin could use right hand and left hand. They were fierce. That bear shield and drew bows. 204 score thousand. All these were mighty men of valor. Okay, the men of Judah, targets. I'm not really sure that what that is. But spears, I know what that is. That's that's a thing that you can throw. It's on a pole. You can use it hand to hand fighting. It's a lot better than a sword because it's longer. And then Benjamin, he could use shields, protect himself. Drew bows. That's bow. <coughs> Excuse me, that's bow and arrows. You only have to really be on the battlefield. You can just shoot from a cupboard somewhere and no one knows where it came from. I wouldn't want to be hit with an arrow. And there came out against them Zira, the Ethiopian. Oh, here's that Ethiopian again. And it's funny, in the New Testament, you read the Ethiopian came to Judah as a of the Judean religion. A host of a of a thousand thousand and three hundred chariots came unto Marisha. Then Asa went out against him, and they set the battle in array in the valley of Zipha at Marisha. And Asa cried unto the Lord, his God. That's very important. His God. He does not cry unto a God. He's crying unto his God, the Lord of the Bible, and said, Lord, it is nothing with thee to help, whether with many or with them that have no power. You know, Lord, we could have 200 billion people, or we can have two people. You're stew the victor. You can just march around, have us march around the city and have the city walls collapse. You're a mighty God. And Lord, help us. We can't do it. Help us. O oh Lord our God, for we rest on thee, and in thy name we go against his multitude. And it's amazing how they'll say, you know, the Bible says, Thou shalt not kill, and this guy's going into battle. In the name of God. In the name of the Lord. Praying to him. And this is where the Roman Catholics will get in there with their Pope and their mighty armies and go fight everybody. Because we're of God. You ain't of God. you got a political mess. You ain't nothing of God. Because everything your church backs, we've been seeing as, as an abomination in the Bible. Your own priest. You call themselves fathers. you got your own altar. you got you know your own wine. you got your own junk. The Queen of Heaven, Jeremiah speaks about, speaks against. The Bread of Heaven for her, Jeremiah speaks against. You ain't not of God. Don't go, don't go saying to the world, we go in your power. All you do is make the Christian name is, is a flawed. It's a joke. That's all that assembly has done. So the Lord smote the Ethiopians before Asa and before Judah, and the Ethiopians fled. And it's funny how the Lord doesn't tell you how he did that. Of all the times that we read in the Bible, I'm a jawbone of an ass. Bumblebees. Hell and, uh, hellstones. He had one army who fought against the same army and were killing each other. He had Jonathan and his sword bearer going amongst one group of people who were killing. God's a wonderful God, a mighty God. He goes in there just tell him march around the city and the walls fall flat. But one section. Why is it we can read these stories in Boring Chronicles and we can see the victory of God and a Christian today can't jump on and say, Lord, help me? 
and their lives are a mess and wrecked and terrible and, and well I, I can do it my way I can use the plastic I can go to my psychiatrist I can go to this doctor I can go to the pills I can go to the alcohol I can do anything but God don't you think that's what the Ethiopians were thinking hey we can go in our God we can go in head straight the next thing you know they're running they've been defeated by the God You know, we're going to come across in the Bible we haven't yet. You know, the most stupidest thing, I, I don't know, I know it's in there. It's one, it's one of those things, it's in there. This army comes in, and they wipe out this nation. Well, not wipe it out, they, they, they conquer this nation. It's God's credit, it's God's people, I know that much. And they go take the gods, the losers, and make them their gods. You know, that's it, it, just stupid. That's like being in the Super Bowl. Two teams battle out, one team wins. And you just go jump on the loser side. Like, hey, yeah, right, yeah. No, wait a minute. No, you go to the winning side. God is the winning side. And they sent the people that were with him, pursued them unto Gerar. And the, yeah, and the Ethiopians, isn't that where Isaac was? Isaac didn't go into... Uh, 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 Isaac did not go into Egypt, but he went to Gerar. And the Ethiopians were overthrown that they could not recover themselves. Well, they had God against them. For they were destroyed before the Lord and before his host, and they carried away very much spoil. That's Israel. You think maybe by the time when you get the book of Acts, chapter 9, I mean, you know, chapter 8, excuse me, the Ethiopia has finally realized that that's the only God. Because that Bible says that the Ethiopian eunuch was sent by his queen. And they smote all the cities round about Gerar, for the fear of the Lord came upon them. And they spoiled all the cities, for there was exceedingly much spoil in them. Gold, silver, clothes, women, animals, you name it, they grabbed it. You know, you hear about the story of Korea and all that. Well, you know, you pick up the guy's wallet, you take his money. Nothing new. That happens. I guarantee those who got Sodom and Sane and those who got uh, Bin Laden, I guarantee they have something personal that was of those two men. It's just a thing of war. They smote also the tents of cattle and carried away sheep and camels in abundance and returned to Jerusalem. So they just helped themselves and grabbed everything they can as a war trophy. That's part of being a victor. You know what America has done wrong? World War II, we were attacked by the Japanese, Pearl Harbor, December 7th, 1941. They came over here, attacked us. When the war was over, we went over there and fixed their country, and they didn't give us one dime to anything for our soldiers, for our uh, naval, for our ships, and for the lives that were destroyed in Pearl Harbor. Adolf Hitler goes through rampant through Europe, and we go over there, we help Germany. And today, the only thing that, that the world loves about America is she'll hand out free money. And if you get in trouble, we'll send our troops over there and we'll bail you out. We've gotten to the point right now that our troops can't even bring a Bible into some of the nations that we go over and defend. That their Bibles are confiscated and burned, and now they're going to start telling our military you can't evangelize, and you can't have no Bible study, and you can't do nothing in the name of your God. Meanwhile, the God that, th that this country loves is destroyed England and is destroying America. I haven't learned from history. What do you learn from history? What we learned today? Build cities, build walls. Build gates, build towers, rely on God in battle, and when God gives you the victory, praise God for the victory, and go and spoil. They don't need it. They're the losers. 
That's it for that.